Bad Jack JW, another unboxing, a nice, uh, actually a cool vintage Ruger. You can tell probably by the box. I uh, picked this one up at vintage in the box, new in the box. Um, I did take it out and actually fire it for the first time, so that was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, it's a Ruger Mark II. You might tell the uh, grips I've changed on them. The original grips are right here I did uh, nothing else in this box um, usually when I come across these they're pretty beat up uh, they've definitely look like they've been ran over by a truck or something but uh, nope uh, there it is in all of its glory the really cool mark II, the standard uh, the four and three quarter inch barrel which is the something I wanted also with those uh, fixed sights nothing uh fancy about them or great but uh, they're not terrible uh even i can still can shoot with them you can see it does have all the features the uh, mark ii would have um, i did replace the grips and of course like i said here's the original grips uh, one of these has made an appearance on the channel some time back i used to actually own one but uh, since i let it go but always regretted it but now i got one another one right here uh, they're fairly inexpensive that's one of the things I like about these they're super common very inexpensive um, you can pick these things up for like literally a couple hundred bucks and uh, they're really well made and so and that's what I like about them the the inexpensive part and very very available uh, most shops you can go into and see one of these so uh, it does have a really cool look it's that classic look that Bill Ruger and Storm Definitely, uh, you know, Bill Ruger really liked them, and uh, this is definitely iconic. They started off in the 50s, and this became very, very, very popular. <laughs> I know. Um, I like a, one of the things I like about them. Obviously, the aesthetics is really cool. You got that uh, really cool uh, James Bond looking Luger feel to them. Uh, shoots 22, gobbles up just about anything, as my other one did as well. Um, so. Heel release on the magazine. It is a standard magazine. I know some of these are interchangeable with Mark One. You just have to kind of switch around the button there. Uh, the, however, as they entered into Mark Three and so on, they added the magazine release would be here. So there's actually like a little piece of metal on the magazine there. Um, the features that normally I stick with an original. Uh, like a, a either like a first generation or something just that's a collector in me but actually the mark ii has features that uh, i really like that i think are a nice upgrade for sure um one of them right there bolt hold open yes and that is the bolt <laughs> um you could probably get me catch me off guard and uh, i'll say slide but uh yeah that's uh, it is the bolt and uh, but it does have that last uh, shot that last shot bolt hold open and the bolt release right here pull down on that it'll release the bolt and then still the heel release on the magazine and everything no magazine disconnect in this that's right no magazine disconnect uh, the other thing that uh, taken them apart I know they have the Mark IV, and the Mark IV is a lot easier. It's got a little pin right there, and it hinges off and everything like that. Um, I, I personally don't really like the way it looks with that big gizmo right there, that hinge and everything. Uh, I love the classic look, and I don't really have much of a problem taking them down myself. Um, and also, they beveled right here with that. They beveled that so you can get easier access to grab a hold of the uh, bolt link here let me see if i can put this paper clip under there i have a couple of this one here it, it it's really stuck so a little couple of wraps with a uh, a rubber mallet will get it to um come over open just kind of get that hammer down bolt will come out um, and then you can give it some wraps on the back here and remove the top but uh, it's not uh, too necessary to go through all that unless you're cleaning it extensively we'll go ahead and uh, do that for you here and uh, you can see 
I fired it. Uh, it does work as they all do and uh, I cleaned it up a little bit in there. You can see real simple not a whole lot going on in there. Not a terrible about, um, about a bunch of stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Bunch of stuff going on in there but you can see how it kind of connects. It's a hook and the hook lives right in here and that it kind of just slides in there and sometimes you'll get rock side to side and uh, up and down because really once that hook is set I mean that's really all that's kind of holding it in aside from the pin that goes in the back it goes right in through there you know simple blowback operation and uh, the spring here really light spring but not a whole lot going on uh, that you remove that pin take out the firing pin you can push back that and take out the uh, extractor and all that the ejector lives on the bottom and these are usually uh, uh, riveted in or some are screwed in right through there and so and you got the hammer of course go ahead and put this back on I just use a, a rubber mallet and kind of just say get it kind of back back into its place but if you do get some that rock a little bit you can put this bottom part the frame in the receiver or the uh, um, a vise and just squeeze down on it a little bit not enough to collapse it but just squeeze down on it a little bit and tighten it up a, a hair and so we'll go ahead and put it back together and then I uh, usually push the fire or the uh, hammer in with a little screwdriver just to get it back out of the way that's one thing you want to make sure that hammer goes back up there correctly Once that's all lined up, I want to make sure that strut on the bottom there lines up with the little cavity right here. And you'll feel it once it uh, engages right there. I kind of pull the bolt back a little bit when I'm pulling the, the, the trigger. Not that I don't know if, uh, how much it helps, but an old gunsmith once told me that. And it kind of prevents you pecking the the chamber a lot because uh, you do have to kind of pull the trigger on this in a in a sense to get it to to disassemble it so uh, really cool again I like these things they're they're neat uh, when I got rid of my original one I kind of regretted it I always wanted to get another one back in my possession and I did so there it is uh, really cool how they kind of made them I'll touch on that a little bit my uh, favorite part about it is the fact that yeah they're not they're very inexpensive and Bill Ruger was very innovative for that trying to design stuff and still be very good yet inexpensive for the buyer for the most part uh, the frame on these are sheet metal in a sense and they uh, I believe they gas welded them together and then they put the trigger guard in place and all that this is just a tube that they threaded and put the barrel on and everything so yeah, kind of handsets but for the price tag and what you're getting is um, really it doesn't seem to it seems like it would cost a lot more but like I said they're fairly common a couple hundred bucks uh, I like the mark II. it's my favorite one I've always had a little bit more trouble with disassembling the mark three because of the uh, other features they put in it and everything but um, once you kind of understand how it all works it's not that bad so anyway there you go Batjack JW with a mark two for you